Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is the software tour of the HTC Snap that was just released in Europe and will soon be on many global carriers at subsidized prices. Now, the Snap isn't trying to be a super capable do-everything device like the HTC Touch Pro, and you can tell that because it doesn't have a touch screen, it's got lower capabilities in terms of in terms of the hardware specifications, less RAM and so forth, fewer wireless radios, but it does so unapologetically. It's made to be a really killer messaging device thanks to this fantastic keyboard and the trackball which allows you to move quickly around on items on the screen. And uh, as you're going to see in this video, it helps a lot to make navigation much smoother. But as you saw in the hardware tour, if you watch that video, and I'll put a link up on the video towards the end, um, one of the biggest problems with this device is that the A key isn't all the way to the left. Instead, there's a tab key here. So what that means is you're typing along expecting there to be an A key there because other similar devices like the Motorola Q9 have the A key over there, and you accidentally press the tab key. It gets kind of annoying, but it's something that you'll have to learn to live with if you're getting this particular version of the Snap. So let's go through the software, and I'm going to zoom in on the screen. So right now I have the device locked, so I'm going to hit the unlock sequence, and over there, and here we are. Now, in terms of software, there's pretty much standard fare on the Snap. Um, there have been a few customizations made from HTC. For example, the volume comes right from the um, HTC Touch Pro and all the new HTC Touch screen devices, but of course, that's not that big of a deal. Let me get a little bit closer in on the screen even. So let's go through the sliding panel interface, because HTC has added a few things. So here we have the clock up here, of course, and it tells you if Wi-Fi is available. We can go down to our calendar and flip to the right to see our next calendar appointments. See if we have any missed calls or missed emails. Of course, it'll tell you if you have text messages or emails right in that one screen. And again, I'm just moving the little ball down gently, and it's, it's, the sensitivity is quite good. You can change it. I'll show you how to change the sensitivity. And... This is for making a new message. Here are emails. This is weather. And if we tap on the weather, we actually get a nice little five-day forecast. Here we have Internet Explorer, and you can add your favorites here. Although, if you're not using Internet Explorer, if you're using Skyfire, as I am, this really doesn't do you any good. Now, if we go down to Play All Songs, and we tap inward, it will search your device for any multimedia that you have on your device. Now, I have some Dave Matthews on here. And I can go into the Audio Manager. And this is the cool looking HTC Audio Manager. We can go back to the library. And this makes it just really easy to play music right from your home screen if you're at the gym. Um, you'll have to use HTC's proprietary headphones or use a converter jack because, of course, the port over on the side, let me get that, uses HTC's proprietary. But it's nice to see this Audio Manager, which makes it pretty easy to you know, manage your multimedia right from the home screen. Going down, we have an entry with multiple options. We can, you know, change the date and time, set up email, lock the device, set up Bluetooth, set a background, change the ringtone, and transfer music to your device. Going down, we change the profiles, which, oh, as, as always, stipulates whether your device will vibrate, whether it will ring, whether it will be completely silent, or if it's on automatic, which is the best choice, it'll determine that based on your availability in the calendar. Okay, so let's go into the programs, and we're going to eventually talk about that Inner circle feature. This is probably the, the biggest deal about the snap beyond the keyboard. Um, so let's go into the start menu and see what we have here. So again, pretty standard stuff. Messaging calendar. We have Office Mobile, which is good. Um, if we go into multimedia, we have some interesting things. We have HTC's album. And again, this is another element that has been ported over from the Touch Pro and the other higher-end HTC devices. It's a really slick-looking photo gallery. So we can tap on a picture. And if we go to the right with the, with the little trackball, we get to the next picture. If we tap on a picture, we get some options. We can go to menu, and we can set it as the home wallpaper. We can make a slideshow. You can save it to a contact if you want to have its a, a picture show up in full screen. So let's go back and back again. We have the camera application for the 2.0 megapixel camera. We have the standard Windows Mobile Photo Gallery. We have streaming media, meaning you can watch YouTube videos on here if you're using m.youtube.com, which is good. Uh, we have a video recorder, which works in a similar fashion than the camera does. We'll cover that in the review. And, of course, Windows Media Player right there to the right. Um, here we have Internet Explorer, which actually is a little bit different. This is the newer version, and you saw a mouse cursor on the screen. You see that? It's a very BlackBerry Pearl-like um, way to navigate. And so if we go to a site like... Um, you know, pocketnow.com. 
And again, I'm using Skyfire because I just like the added speed of that. Um, but you may find this new version of Pocket Internet Explorer to actually be somewhat compelling. It's not as fast as Skyfire, so I'm going to probably have to jump ahead in the video to show you what it looks like when it loads on the screen. And then we get the mobile version of PocketNow.com, and you should be able to change that, actually. If we go into this menu and we go to View, yeah, see, we can change it to Mobile or Desktop. So that's, that's the Internet Explorer. Let's get out of here. Whoop. Okay, um, other stuff, call history, of course, games, the standard fare. Um, Google Maps and the GPS on the HTC Snap works very well. It has full assisted GPS. Indoors on a cold start, I was able to get a signal in about 12 seconds. In a hot start or a warm start, it's, you know, 3-4 seconds. Very fast, great GPS performance, as good as the Touch Pro 2. Going to accessories, we have some new things. So we have, you know, clear storage, clock and alarm, communication manager, which again is skinned just like it is on the higher end HTC devices. So you have this nice looking 3D uh, switcher. Internet sharing, SIM manager, voice notes, task manager. And here we have Google Maps. And, of course, I put Skyfire on there because I think it's a fantastic web browser. Tweakini, which is a really, really good Twitter client for Windows Mobile non-touchscreen or touchscreen. And Inner Circle, which I'm going to explain right now because that's the really big feature of this, um, of this device. Now, from any screen, whether you're in, uh, you know, Skyfire or you're in you know, Tweakini, or in your calendar, you can go to the bottom of the keyboard and press this inner circle button. And I know the camera's having trouble focusing right now. So if I press that button, and you'll be taken to a filter screen, which filters out all of your email by only the people that are in your inner circle. And right now I have two people set, Anton and Adam Lane. And uh, the way that you set the people in your inner circle, and by the way, from this screen, you just tap on a message and it brings it up just as usual, just as, just as if you were in Outlook Mobile. And then, of course, you can jump right to all email if you press this button. And there's some menu options in here. So if I go to menu and I go to member list, it shows all of the people that I have in my inner circle. So right now there are four people. So it's going to scan my inbox for any messages from Chung, Adam, Alana, or Anton and show me the matches. Now I can add people, of course, if I go to add. And I am taken to my standard address book that comes out of my phone. And I can just go down the list and check off people that I want to be in my inner circle or uncheck them, and they will be added. It's a very, very simple concept. In fact, um, there's actually a tutorial that is very, very small. Let me show you the tutorial. Here it is, tutorial. And this is it. <laughs> Group your closest contacts in one location, your inner circle, dedicated inner circle key. So you use the key down there. Simply add members from your contact list or received messages. And then it goes through a little animation. And it's demonstrating how it would work. Hope these aren't real email addresses. <laughs> And that's it. That's the that's the end. It's a very simple concept, really. So, does the inner circle actually matter? Would people use it? Well, here's the thing. If you get a lot of email, and I know a lot of people do, from, you know, 10, 15, 20 people a day, and really at the end of the day, you only care about what five of them have to say. Those are the five people you correspond with the most. They're your business partners or your coworkers or your family and your friends. Then if that's you, then Inner Circle is a fantastic feature. But if you're like me, and it just so happens due to various email filters, that the email that I get on my phone is already filtered, then it's, it's not going to have much utility. Um, so I'm not going to be using the feature that much, but I know so many people that could get a lot of use from it. So finally, we're going to go through some settings and see if there's anything interesting in the settings, which there really isn't. There are some speed uh, adjustments for the trackball, which is really all that is different. So we can go into trackball here, and we can change the sensitivity from slow to normal to fast. Right now I have it on fast, which I honestly don't think is fast enough. I think it needs to be even more sensitive. Um, we can show the change of sensitivity in the browser, enable repeat mode, and kind of stipulate exactly how many lines it scrolls when you're in an email and that sort of thing. So overall, the software on the HTC Snap is very standard stuff 
HTC has done, you know, a few customizations to make it more elegant as they normally do. But in the end, this is a Windows Mobile non-touch screen device. It has very snappy performance. The trackball is a really great way to navigate. Um, and it's it's quite unusual for a Windows Mobile device of this kind. And the, the keyboard does take some getting used to, as we mentioned in the hardware tour video. And you can actually use it to do certain things like the inner circle or open up messaging or start a new text message. There are a bunch of keys here. We can even li launch Windows Live Messenger. Um, from the keyboard. So that's it for the software tour. We'll be back soon with the full review on pocketnow.com. In case you missed it, I'll put the unboxing video and the hardware tour video up on the screen now so you can jump to that after this video if you're interested in the HTC Snap. Again, if you want a snap of your own, you can get one at clove.co.uk, shipping for about 255 British pounds. That's around $430 depending on the time of day. And that's it for now. We'll be back soon with more on the review.